uncoupling passenger cars with their diaphragms is difficult at the best of times and in a situation like this where we're reaching into buildings and behind other trains it can be well nigh impossible to do it by hand anyway I have a solution so follow along and I will walk you through it the goal here is to use a tortoise switch machine to raise and lower a KD uncoupling magnet I have to build a bracket to hold it here's one I did yesterday I'm going to duplicate it so follow along first step is to build a sleeve that allows the magnet to run up and down the shaft inside the thickness of the benchwork. I'm, only use, I'm using a thin styrene here because unfortunately I didn't leave myself enough clearance when I cut the holes. So 20 thou is all I have room for. It would have been better if I'd made them slightly bigger so I could use 40 for this but I have done some experiments and I think 20 thou will work. On this. The fourth side needs to be somewhat taller so that it can catch one of the side plates to support it, otherwise it's going to be very fragile and could easily break off. There's the sleeve done. There's one side plate. calling this the back plate. That's what I bolt the tortoise to. And the other side plate. Now I'm going to double up the thickness everywhere that I need to put bolts or screws, just to give me some strength. I'm using a mixture of 60 and 80 thou styrene for this. want to have some meat. I suspect that there's going to be some reasonable loads on it. Or rather.
a little long. That's all there is to it. There's my bracket, now to the same state as this one. As you can see, it's built the other way around, longitudinal and transverse holes, just to give me different options. I need eight altogether. I went through last night and figured out which type would best fit each location. So there's one more done. Now to mount the tortoise. As you can see, the activating screw lines up with the middle of the hole because there'll be a, a down rod that will attach to the bottom of the magnet. I'm using small machine screws to attach the tortoise to the bracket and when the time comes I will use one inch drywall screws to attach the bracket under the bench work. <coughs> Welcome back. While you were gone, I cobbled together a push rod out of some scrap styrene. This will be attached in here with the magnet glued on top. What I've got to do is get the length right so that at the top of its throw it's, put, it's exerting some pressure on the bottom of the, of the track so it's as high as it can be. At this stage it's better to be a little bit too short than too long because if it's too short I can always add spaces in here. If it's too long then I'm going to have to um, break it off and start again. Let's mark the, the length I need and drill a hole for the screw. be too tight because <coughs> I don't want it to bind in the shaft. Then what I have to do, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> then what I have to do is position it so that the magnet is pushed up but horizontally. I might have got that a little high. It's still within tolerance though. 
it just means that the motor will stall out slightly before the end of its throw. <coughs> and now I'm just going to glue the top of the styrene to the bottom of the magnet. Now glued the down rod to the back of to the back of the magnet. The last step before I call this subassembly done is to attach my wiring loom to a terminal strip. I'm going to stick it on with double sided double sided tape. You may notice that I'm only using six terminal blocks when the tortoise actually has eight wires. That's because I only need one switch for an LED on the control panel. There's not going to be any rails to switch polarity or anything like that. So I'm just going to take the extra three wires that I don't need and stuff them all into one terminal just so they don't cause a short anywhere. Six is a convenient number because the terminal blocks come in strips of 12. So I'm just going to screw these in here and I'll be right back. Okay, this is now done and ready to install on the layout. Over the last few days I have duplicated the design. I now have seven that are the same, well, variations on a theme. We also have one that had to be a little bit different because there wasn't room. We have this one and that will go under there, attached via a piece of coat hanger wire as a push rod onto the crank. Because using tortoise switch machines is not the cheapest way of doing this, but I didn't have any face here available. If I did, I would just hook, all, hook them all up using a crank like this and coat hang a wire to the fascia. It would be a lot cheaper, but I didn't have that option available to me, so I used the tortoise switch machines. I already had them on hand anyway, left over from a previous layout, or rather, or rather salvaged from a previous layout. So anyway, time to get them installed. I'll see you again later. Bye. It's been a while, but I've finally got all the electrics hooked up for the uncoupling ramps. The LEDs are for the most part working. I've still got three that I need to uh, troubleshoot. Other than that, it's all done. So let's take a look at the control panel. Here's the control panel with all the additional switches and LEDs mounted. As you can see, I've put the toggle switches sideways to distinguish them from the, those that control the turnouts. There are eight uncoupling magnets in my passenger terminal, five on the front track and three on the back track. The three at the west end are controlled only from the main panel. The three at the east end are controlled only from the subsidiary panel. The two in the middle can be controlled from either panel with dual switching. All the ramps, sorry, all the magnets have LEDs on both panels so that whichever side of the peninsula I'm operating, I can see at a glance if any of the magnets are up. Throw a switch, and the LED comes on. 
we go over to the other panel, you can see the equivalent LED comes on there as well. There's a little bit of, de of a delay because the tortoise is a slow motion machine. It's not the ideal, or well it's not my preferred way of operating them, and if I had enough fascia space, I would have done it entirely manually. It would have been a lot easier and cheaper. But I already had the tortoises in stock. So, that's how the panel works. Let's run some trains. 